today I'm reviewing the La Roche Posay Shaka Invisible SPF Sunscreen. And really quick, I just want to say I purchase all these products with my own money. I'll never waste your time sponsored ads or videos. So if you want to help support the channel, check out nobsbeauty.com, check out my Patreon community, or click on the Amazon link below. And behind me, we've got a, kind of updated the studio. I've got a beanie baby for each of my Patreons. So if you want to know which one yours is, you can ask me, but this one is Carrie's right here because it's My Little Pony. Okay, so this is one I've been meaning to review probably since the day I started my channel. Finally, several years later, finally getting the chance to. So, the Roche Posay Shaka Fluid Fragrance Free SPF 50 is an ultra light, very high sun protection for the face. It is ultra waterproof, sweatproof, and sandproof. I'm not exactly certain what sandproof means, that sand won't stick to you, maybe? Uh, minimalist and hypoallergenic formula is specifically developed for sensitive skin, so it should, shoot, should suit any and all skin types. Furthermore, the broad photostable UVA, UVB infrared protection is comfortable on the skin without feeling oily or sticky. Instead, the product glides easily over the skin without creating a feeling of discomfort and it's unsightly white marks and the best part it is also suitable for the eye contour area as the minimal formula won't sting eyes they also have a tinted version and this fragrance free uh, version I believe it's newer because before there was only one version now they've got a tinted and a fragrance free version I just wish they had a tinted and fragrance free single version which is tinted and fragrance free but as for right now, I'm just going to be happy I was able to get this. Kind of through some internet work. Because in the U.S., actually being able to get good sunscreen is quite difficult because the FDA is like 40 years behind. Thanks, FDA, for that. Okay, so my first criteria is packaging. Obviously, I package in a little bottle, which it looks so much smaller than what you think it holds. I think this is 1.7 ounces total, I want to say. Let me double check on that. It's 50 milliliters, which is 1.69 ounces. It just looks so much smaller than other bottles that are 1.7 ounces. I don't know. I should do a video of all the different size bottles because you've got ones that are gigantic, ones that are like this big, and they all hold the same amount. So, Although I will say I ordered some lipstick the other day. I was a little bit annoyed that this tube of lipstick came in a giant box. I mean, it's like just an obnoxious. Anyway, I digress. So, and they also have a needle nose tip, which also is the most effective way, although it's still pretty runny, so it's still a little messy, but uh, no issues with the packaging. My second criteria is denatured or drying types of alcohol, and that's probably my biggest issue with this one is uh, Denatured alcohol is the second ingredient. However, it doesn't really feel like other products feel when they have a lot of alcohol in them. Sometimes I think overall, as long as you use it in a routine where you've got a really good moisturizer underneath, uh, the alcohol is well still not great for skin overall. If you use it with a really good routine, I found ways to get around using products that have a lot of alcohol without leaving them making your skin feel super dry. So, although if you have very sensitive skin, just be cautious of that because I think sometimes when you have a high, high amount of drying alcohol and chemical sunscreens, it just increases the likelihood that there could be uh, sensitivity from it. So just be aware of that, which is also why I would recommend the fragrance-free version because then when you add the fragrance on top of that, just kind of have a cumulative effect, which just cannot be the best for skin. So then we get to fragrance, obviously it's a fragrance free version and a uh, very nice option to have. Uh, has a slight sunscreen scent to it, but that disappears pretty quickly. So um, very nice option. The manufacturing location for this one is France. So no issues for that. Um, the SPF in this is 50 plus, which indicates it has exceptional uh, coverage for your sun. Uh, especially SPF rate. SPF indicates it's monitoring the UVB protection, which is the rays that burn you. UVAs give you skin damage. UVB rays burn you. 
Uh, and then in a lot of countries, you can't indicate any higher coverage than 50. So 50 plus usually means it's at least 60 or higher, just due to whichever country uh, they may get in. So then we get to the UVE, UVA rays, which are the ones that damage you, wrinkle you, uh, and you don't even really know what's happening. This one has uh, PA++++, which is four pluses, which indicates it has exceptional UVA protection, which is the problem with a lot of US made sunscreens that are chemical. They just can't compete to some of the newer filters, which the FDA won't allow the companies to use. Uh, and then Loros Pose uh, states that this has a PPD of 46. PPD is uh, persistent pigment darkening. Most chemical sunscreens in the US are like 16 and under just because the chemicals just aren't the best at it. La Roche Pose, as the brand, has access to a lot of the newer filters and has patents on some so they can have that great coverage. Bioderma also has some sunscreens which have a PPD of 46, 47, and above. So if you have a lot of pigmentation issues, if you're using retinols, exfoliants in your routine, I highly recommend using a sunscreen with a really high PPD because that just prevents uh, any sun damage from coming back. So if you're gonna use acids, retinols, things like that, use a great sunscreen during the day because there's no point of going to all that trouble to use your retinols and help with the skin sun damage and then not wear sunscreen. It's just, I wouldn't even recommend, I, I, at that point I would tell you not even use the retinol or acid or exfoliants because they're just gonna increase the likelihood that there's more damage in the future. Okay, so filters used in this sunscreen, we've got quite a few. So we've got, we've got uh, Escalol 587A, which is a colorless to light yellowish oily liquid that works as a UVB filter. Uh, it's not super strong in itself, but it's always used in a combination with other filters that make it uh, stronger and enhance its uh, protection. Then we've got Uvenol T150, which is a good ingredient that absorbs UVB rays. Tinsorb S, a very photostable filter that absorbs both UVB and UVA rays. Uh, then we've got Avobenzone, which is a UVA ray absorber, which Avobenzone is traditionally, or not traditionally, it's technically known as not super photostable alone, which is one of the only chemical UVA filters uh, US sunscreens can use, but when you use it with some of these other filters, it works better. Uh, then we've got Mexoral XL, which is L'Oreal's patented exclusive sunscreen agent, uh, which they invented in 1999. It's commonly known as Mexoral XL. It's oil soluble, photostable chemical sunscreen, which uh, helps absorb both UVB and UVA rays. And then we've got Mexoral XL, another L'Oreal exclusive. Uh, that one is water soluble and really protects mostly in the UVA range. So between all those filters, you're getting a really good mix of UVB and UVA ray uh, absorbers and blockers, which make this a great sunscreen for burns and skin damage, which almost no US made sunscreen can even stand a candle to compete with stand a candle to stand candle to candle toe to toe huh hold the candle, hold the candle too okay <laughs> okay white cast shake it up sounds like spray paint but it's not and there is no white cast to this one at all it truly is invisible once it absorbs into your skin there you go no white cast at all pretty amazing it's amazing it is because you know i've tried so many sunscreens that aren't amazing and have a terrible white cast and this one is actually invisible so no white cast at all very impressive they did a great job with that thankfully texture super liquidy although once it soaks in it sets to a really nice matte finish that doesn't look oily or greasy it just looks like a natural finish um, doesn't accentuate dry areas or make skin look dry and it doesn't make skin look oily either so very nice uh, texture and finish super nice very easy to use 
uh, which is my next point, the ease of use, very easy to use. They recommend applying it 15 to 30 minutes before you're gonna go outside. Apply it as the last step in your skincare routine, but right before foundation. It absorbs quickly, doesn't pill, and it's one of the easier to reapply sunscreens. Although if you use a very heavy foundation or a lot of powder, the reapplication gets a little less easy the more uh, products you apply right over the foundation. Um, and then for using it, reapply it after swimming, sweating, and every at least hour and a half you're outside because the longer you're outside, the filters get more degraded and uh, the more it absorbs and blocks, it just kind of degrades and then you need to reapply it. So. If you don't reapply it, you will get burnt or get sun damage. So antioxidants. So they even label this on the packaging. Let's see. PA, UVA, UVB, antioxidants. There's really not a ton of antioxidants in here. Um, yeah. I don't know how they can even say that. I mean, they, I guess they've got vitamin E in there, which is an antioxidant, and then several other slip ingredients. But other than that, it's not the most exciting sunscreen in terms of beneficial ingredients, which just makes using a good skincare routine before you apply it even more important. Use a good vitamin C product, use a good moisturizer, use some peptides, some other antioxidants, and then you'll be a little bit happier. This one doesn't have the most exciting ingredient list. Yeah. So use vitamin C and some other good moisturizers beforehand. Okay, then in terms of acneogenic ingredients, we've got a few, uh, and then one that is a fungal acne trigger, isopropyl mistrate, vitamin E, and then triethanolamine. So not a ton of acneogenic ingredients, a few. So keep that one in mind, but shouldn't be an issue for most people unless you're very, very sensitive to acneogenic ingredients. Then we get to animal testing, and unfortunately, La Roche-Posay is sold in mainland China, so it is not cruelty-free. This gets to be a confusing topic because there are some brands which are sold in China that are not required to be tested on animals, and that is through uh, a website. So if a brand really wants to sell in China, they can without being required to animal test, and that is just admitting that you'll only be on a website, but if you are a brand and you want to be in actual physical stores, then it has to be uh, up for animal testing. So hopefully that changes. I don't know. I've been doing this for a long time and every year it looks like it's going to happen and then it doesn't. So we'll see. Someday it will, I believe. Okay, then we get to performance, and this one does an exceptional job. As long as you use a good skincare routine and a good vitamin C before you apply this, I think you'll be very happy with how it performs. It prevents uh, sun damage, especially, like for me, I've got hyperpigmentation issues that have been there for a long time, which I've been really working hard to treat. And I will say I've tested a few sunscreens recently where... Uh, when I look in the mirror at the end of the day, I can see some of those spots starting to darken up again. That never happens when I use this sunscreen. At the end of the day, my skin looks, after I wash everything off, as pale as it did before I put everything on. So I think it does a great job. Doesn't feel greasy. Uh, you can wear it all day without it starting to break up or anything like that. So it just lasts all day with no issues. Love it. Performs quite nicely. Price on this one, so 1.69 ounces, 50 milliliters. It retails around $25, but you can frequently get it on sale, depending on where you live. Uh, but at the retail price, it's about 50 cents an ounce, or 50 cents a milliliter, which isn't super expensive. And in my opinion, it's a, one of the more affordable sunscreen options out there. Um, so overall, 15 being a perfect score. This one got 11, which is pretty darn good. But done a little bit better without the alcohol, the animal testing, the acneogenic ingredients. But overall, in my opinion, it's still one of the better sunscreens that I've tried. And I'm so happy to finally get a chance to do my review on it because uh, hopefully some of you that are out there looking for a good sunscreen will check this one out and uh, give it a try. So anyway, I'm interested in hearing from you if you have had a chance to try this. 
or if you've tried the tinted version, I want to hear all about that one. So definitely leave a comment. I love hearing from you. And stay tuned for more tomorrow. Thank you so much, guys.